All right, welcome all. I think people are still maybe trickling in, but uh, give it a few minutes. Uh, while we are waiting, we can um, we can uh, install the CLI for sanity. Uh, welcome, Yvonne, Sasha, um, Rodrigo. Um, I know that some of you might not be super into installing a global node package, so there's another way to do it. Um, but I can show that when we install the studio. Hello from Bergen. Oh, long time no see. Hold on. Hello, welcome. So nice to have you all in the room, in this workshop. I think we'll give it 35 seconds, and then we probably need to start because 43 minutes to do this isn't a lot of time. And I, ho I have hope to show you some cool stuff. So, um, so let's see. All right. I guess let's start. So, um, hi, um, I'm Knut. I run developer relations at Sanity.io. And as you might already know, since you're here, Sanity.io is a content platform. So whenever you need some content, be it kind of like text or images or kind of like data structures, question mark, uh, you can use Sanity. Um, it will give you a real-time document store that's hosted, scalable, yeah, CDNs and all of that good stuff. Uh, it will also give you a open source uh, editing environment or a CMS maybe, you can also call it, called Sanity Studio that we are going to look at today. Um, and that lets you build pretty much any kind of content workflow that you want. Um, and that is what this workshop is about, how to make awesome content experiences uh, for editors. Um, if you already know a bit of Sanity, some of this stuff might be kind of like basic, but I will try to, to wrap it in some principles and some how we think about creating awesome editorial experiences. So hopefully it will be fruitful for you as well. Um, and we will barely scratch the surface <laughs> of uh, what you can do. But, uh, but yeah, um, of course, if you are hungry for more stuff after this workshop, uh, you're always welcome to reach out and join our community on slack.sanity.io. Um, so you can go here and join the Slack community. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I sh should just start. So. I've always been interested in how, like in the stuff that goes behind a website. So the code and how it all works, but also the people. So how does content end up on a website? Yeah, you need some way to kind of like publish it and so on. You need kind of like a, some kind of front end code. Uh, you need maybe some kind of back end, but you also need people kind of like typing in all the words and thinking about it. And after having worked at an agency for a, a good while, I saw a lot of people being frustrated by how it was to work with kind of like the content part of a website. So that is also why I uh, was so happy to join Sanity because the team are thinking super deeply about how to make it better for editors uh, and content creators to, to work with content and how to make it better for developers to work, work with kind of content that editors want to put in. And that is what we are going to talk about and work with today. And um, I'm fortunate to work with two pretty great people. Uh, one is Simon 
Swalos Guxru, who is uh, one of the co-founders and CTO of Sanity. And the other is Carrie Hain, who is a content strategist relation. So she is working a little bit kind of content people about how to think about something called search content. And they made some principles for what makes for great editorial experiences. Um, and these are the prin principles. Uh, and we're going to kind of go through them. We are going to look at some code and hopefully write it together. Um, you are welcome to kind of write it alongside me. Uh, I might go a bit fast since we have under 40 minutes again left. But uh, let's see how it, how it turns out. Um, the principles, however, I will just read them, are share intentions, not solutions. Define what matters, make presentation support the content, and empower content teams. So that is kind of like the frame of mind we are going to go into this with. Um, and I want to kind of like bring you into a scenario that we're going to work with today. So let's say you work for a company that offers a range of services, like ser whatever they are, like services. It could be products, but let's say services. It's a consultancy company or something. Um, and they are offering these services, services to different audiences. This is a pretty typical use case. Um, and your team comes to you and say, we want to build a new website. We are kind of like, this website we have doesn't work. It's old and crappy and everything is just, it takes too long to get stuff done. We need a new one. And also we have this new brand design coming in. Um, and we know that you want to use kind of like modern tools. We know you're super tired of writing uh, Perl or PHP, whatever. Uh, and we see that you want to use React. And we heard about this Gatsby thing. Of course, you should be able to use Gatsby, right? Um, so that is important. But yeah, we need something to make landing pages. Uh, and we need to make landing pages without having to ask you about pushing code because we like we want to be agile and and, and get things out quickly, um, and we don't want to bother you with kind of like pushing content for Git and stuff. Um, and I guess as some of you have had a question like we need to make landing pages like can we make make a new website? And often we just say yes, let's make it happen, and then we start working right. And implementing, waiting for some design in Figma or whatever. But that is kind of like the solution. It's not kind of like the problem they're trying to, to solve. So as developers, we can take a step back and we can ask the team, like, what are you actually trying to achieve here? Like, is it to like, is making a landing page the problem you're trying to solve? Or is it something else? And of course, it's something else. Um, the team is trying to, to communicate something about services. And they're trying to, to make it possible for the right audience to find the right information in order to get in touch or something, right? That's the problem, right? Um, the company and the team has some goals. And the people you want to reach also have some goals. They, they want to get their stuff done. And that is the problem. And like, landing pages might be a solution for that. But when you start to shift your mind around, kind of like what you're actually trying to do, what, what you're actually trying to solve, then you might come with a different, um, kind of like, then you might make something that's a bit different than just kind of like whatever uh, everyone else is doing. Um, because then you can come into a conversation about how, okay, you want to make landing pages, but is there something else you want this content to do? Like you want to describe services, but like, is it only on this landing page? Is there something else? And it turns out um, the team also uh, want to cut down time spent on copy pasting the same information across different systems and so on. And, um, they want to spend time on the right things. And when you think about the website information architecture and design, it turns out like uh, a description for service might, you might want to reuse that description or whatever across the whole website. 
uh, you, you might want to embed it in other, like in a blog post or whatever. Um, so this information isn't just a page, it's actually it's content about a thing. So the first thing we need to do is to make kind of like a system they can use as a single source of truth. And this is great for developers as well. Like, uh, like we know that we can point to one thing in the GraphQL API, and that's the thing. And you will not find kind of like a copy of that thing elsewhere. It's kind of like the keep dry, don't repeat yourself principle, right? Um, and you can kind of like make a good data structure. So this is kind of like data modeling thinking, uh, but only for content. So I thought we should actually do it. <laughs> And you start by actually installing the CLI that you have had in front of you the whole time. Uh, I will go into uh, full screen mode like this. Um, so it's just to run this, this command. Uh, now I realize I have logged in. So you all will type sanity in it. And this will, um, for most of you who haven't installed Sanity already, this will kind of like create this login thing where you have to create an account uh, and log in. And then you will be able to, and then finally you will get to this screen where you can uh, create a new website um, or, sorry, a new project. Um, so I will create a new project. I will call it uh, uh, company services website is a pretty sucky name but okay um and then we'll hit enter then it will ask me to use the default data set configuration and uh, i will do that let's see and output path i will just put it in this folder that i'm in hopefully this work no it's not empty okay I'll just call it. Um, I'll just call it Studio. I have some Markdown files, and then I will ask you about like some project templates. And um, for this exercise, I think we'll just go with the blog, and then we will add services and audiences to it. So let's go with that. And if you have questions underway, like just post them in the chat. Uh, I think maybe I have a colleague with me that will also be able to help out in the chat. But I will do my best to kind of like answer whatever questions you have. Um, waiting for NPM to download packages and so on. Let's see. Uh, you can see here that we have a studio folder. Uh, let me the font are slightly smaller. Um, so this is the studio application. Uh, all of this code you can also find on GitHub, but um, this is the best way to kind of like initiate a new studio. Um, and what we care about today is this schemas folder. And you can already see that we have a couple of files here um, that might you might recognize from kind of like a blog, there's a post thing, there's categories, there's authors, and then we have the schema.js file. And um, this is where we pull in all of our different content types. Um, let's see. So before we are doing that, we are going to start the development server for the studio. Uh, you see that this, this thing is done, it asks me to to CD into the studio folder, and then we can say sanity start. And oh, I have correctly. Um, then it will start the development server for the studio, and uh, this gives us kind of like a real, real time, uh, time uh, feedback loop when we can like develop the schemas and so on. Um, so eventually, this will start up on localhost 3333, which is a super hard port name number to say, 33. Like, yeah. Anyways, uh, it's compiling. Um, well, it's compiling. Here we can see 
um, the post and offer category and something called block content being pulled into schema types. And this is how the studio will see all the schema types you have. So if we re reload here, um, you can see, uh, I need to log in. And here we can see the um, the um, document types, and we can make a new post. And this is kind of like the uh, the forums you are probably used to seeing for this kind of content. There's a title. Um, oh, my machine is super laggy. <laughs> um, and what's good to know that when you type into the studio, uh, all your content will be synced in real time to the hosted your hosted kind of like content lake, as we call it. Your document store. So there's no local content. It will always be synced up. Uh, that means that if someone is elsewhere in the same studio, um, that is also real time, like Google Docs. Anywho, we want to make a new document type uh, called services. So we will create a new file. Um, and I will call this called service in singular. Uh, and then I don't know why it complains about Bubble, but yeah. Uh, what's interesting, if you use Copilot, uh, Copilot kind of knows sanity schemas, so it will help you often, but um, not. It shouldn't be the default, it should be service, right? Um, so we give this kind of like document type a name, uh, we give it a type, which is document, and I don't have a lot of time to explain all of this, but. <laughs> and then we give it a title, so this will be, uh, so this is a document type. That means we need fields for it. And we are going, we are just going to do this super simple. So a service can have a field called, I think it's name, makes sense. And the way you can read this is that um, in your code, you can kind of like have service.name sort of. And this should be just be a string and the title, and I will show you what that is in a minute. That can be name. And then we can save this. And then we can import this to the um, schema. Oh. This, and then we need to add this to this array in order for the studio to see it. And when I now save, the studio should reload. or rebuild, and then we can go out to the um, here, and we can see this new thing popping up. And here we have a service, so it can be, I don't know, finance, right? <laughs> so now we have made a new document type uh, for service. Um, we have given it a field called name. Um, and this is the first thing uh, you can think about when you are making editorial uh, experiences because it's always about kind of like making things easier to understand and not have people think. So take this label name. We can make that kind of like better by adding just service in front of it. This seems super basic, but like it's small things like this that will actually make us a huge difference. So now it's service name. And here we can also see how how come like this experience is to develop. We can also say description, uh, the name of this, that's pretty obvious. Uh, but you can also say things like, uh, uh, keep it short, right? You can have small instructions. Uh, and often it's good when the, the editors are kind of like, telling you what these discussion, this uh, description should be because it can help them kind of like stay on top of ton of voice and so on. Um, I mentioned that services should be, it should be possible to kind of like uh, have services connected to audiences. Like maybe we want to build a website that 
kind of like can lead different audiences into different services and things like maybe um it has ways for finance people to get some services and for uh, hr people to go to another um so let's make a new document type called audience The same thing goes here. Name, then copilot pick this up. Audience, fields, oops. Name, its name here as well. Type, string, title, audience name. It's so funny that copilot like picks these patterns up, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see. And then we can add this audience. Then we can add this. Yeah. Um, there's a question about localization. I don't think we have time to cover it. <laughs> it's like already 25 minutes left. Um, but that's certainly possible. Um, there are guides and stuff on it on this anti-IO um, docs website. But, but yeah, but it's a good point. Uh, if you plan to have localization, that is something you want to think about pretty early on in this uh, in this exercise. So um, now we have an audience type as well. So we can say thank you, low for posting that. Um, we can say that we have finance. Right? And by the way, when you type here, what happens in the back end is that you are creating this JSON document. So this is your data. This is what you are going to kind of interface with in your Gatsby site. And here you can see that we have a new field name and finance, and then we have a type audience. Let's make one more uh, and call it uh, HR. Because now we want to kind of make a connection between services and audiences. Um, and this is a neat thing with structured content. You can kind of make this connection between content and then you can query for it. You can say like, give me all the uh, services connected to the finance audience or give me all the audiences connected to the, uh, to, to the whatever service. Uh, let's call it this auditing, right? Or auditing, yeah. Um, um, and how we can make these connections with something called a reference in Sanity. And the reference will always be bi-directional. You can always kind of like query for, from both sides in a way. But you have to put the reference field in a document. And this is another kind of like thing about editorial experience, like where you put fields actually matter. Um, so think about it like, it's probably, you're probably going to, it's like, if you add a new service, you probably want to select the audience for that service right there and then. You probably don't want to go back to the audience and select a service for it after you made a new service kind of thing. So that is why it might be good to put the audience on this service document. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, and then there's another consideration. Should it all only be possible to connect a service to one audience or can it kind of like span several audiences? So now you have to make a, a decision about if it should just be kind of like one reference or many. And in this case, I think it's probably many. So let's say uh, audience, probably audiences in plural. Then we can use something called an array. So if you're familiar with JavaScript, that should be familiar. Uh, and an array of something. And then we can say it should be a reference 
it should be to the type audience. The way you can read it is that this is an array of references to the type audience. And if we save this, Hopefully we should have a new field here. Yeah. And it says add item, and then we can add a reference to the things we just made, or we can even create a new one if we haven't covered it. Um, good stuff. Um, and again, it's kind of like, who are the target audience for this service. You can also kind of like ask questions that's easy to answer, easy to understand what this field is intended for, right? And for some of you, you might recognize that this can actually be, be, be the data you need to make a URL structure for your site. Maybe you want kind of like uh, your company slash HR slash auditing, for example, or and so on. Um, right. Now we made an array of references to services. And if you see in the data, here you can see this array. It's better with this one, maybe. And it contains kind of like this reference object that you can query. And if you want to query it, uh, um, this will kind of like in GraphQL, it will probably appear then as kind of like the actual audience data. We can see if we have time to deploy and, and query for that after. Um, but here we have another thing. Like now it's possible to add finance yet again, like this, and HR. But this isn't what we want, right? We don't want finance two times in this array. That doesn't make sense. Uh, but it's super easy to do, as you just saw that uh, I did. So what we need is field validation. And field validation can be helpful for editors. It can also be a bit annoying. So let's try and make it helpful. And this is where we start to see the advantage of having JavaScript as a way to kind of like yeah, you can see Cobalt already know knows what I'm getting at, but uh, it's it like having JavaScript as the way to write schemas becomes super powerful when you are going going into uh, validation and so on because uh, then it's only only code that interacts with data. Uh, so here we have kind of like a function. This is kind of like. A, short way to write a function. Uh, we pass it something called a rule so that this is kind of like built in with Sanity um, to make it kind of like easier to do common stuff. So we can go in the docs and we can kind of like look up how validation works. So there's no built in methods you can do, but you can also do kind of like completely custom stuff. Um, even async stuff if you want to kind of like query an API to know if this field is valid and so on. So it's pretty powerful. Um, but here we are using the simple thing called uh, unique. And now we see there's a validation error, right? Let's see if you can reload. And it says, uh, can't be a duplicate, right? Which is an okay warning, but we can also help them and say something more specific. Uh, uh, make sure each audience is unique. Maybe that's a bit better. Um, again, here you can work with editors to like, what would they like to read? Like what makes sense for them? Um, and here you can see that it kind of changed it, changed the warning. Uh, delete one of them, right? Even more helpful because then you are telling people what you actually, how to actually resolve this, this issue. 
in this case, it makes sense that this is an error that like it, you, you can't publish with this error, so you have to resolve it. Sometimes uh, that's a bit strict. And then you can start kind of like making it a bit less strict. So you can make it a warning. So a warning won't block publishing, but it will kind of like tell you that this, this might be a problem, right? Maybe, um, maybe you have dealt with duplication in front end or whatever, but, but yeah. Or you can even go lower and relax it more and say just info. So again, like this is kind of like, it feels like a detail. It feels kind of like deep in the weeds of stuff, but actually matters. If, if a person are going into this form every day to work with it, like small things like this matters a lot. So that's why I'm showing you. And you can also add more validation rules and so on. But um, this was just kind of like a super fast uh, example. Er then I will remove this one. And it disappears beautifully. And uh, there we go. Right, good stuff. Um, so you're you're still making landing pages. Uh, so maybe we should, um, for the sake of the example, make a little uh, description field. It feels so much like cheating. <laughs> um, Uh, are the best at auditing um, we are still making long pages, uh, but we are not kind of doing it doesn't doesn't look like webflow, right? And that might be obvious because we are using Gatsby here, right? Um, we have React. React lets us kind of like make systems, like design systems with components, so we can reuse kind of like the same card component across. Maybe you're using Tailwind or CSS modules with variables to keep everything neat and consistent and resilient because you have to the design have to be responsive. It can't break, and so on. Um, so when you have this system, it makes sense to to give it data. Because think about the React components, for example. They have props. Um, and props wants data. You don't want, and you don't want to kind of have a lot of props. Uh, you want to keep it dry and, and simple and, 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 and so on. So I think, especially with these modern frameworks, uh, you want to kind of like have presentation stuff not mixed with the content. Sometimes you need to have some, like maybe you want to be able to actually prioritize which comes first. It's like, no, it should be HR that's first in the list or for the cards or whatever. So ordering and so on makes sense to have here. But when it comes to kind of like, oh, uh, how much gap should it be in your grid? Like should it be kind of like 12 pixels or 24? That's probably something you should kind of like Build into your front end code as rules. Nothing, uh, not something that editors should kind of like have to care about. Even kind of like alignment, like it, when you have a site, should the image be on the right or left, um, depending on the ordering? Maybe that's something you can automate in front end and kind of like leave that work from the editor so they can spend time on other things. Um, but I wanted to show you quickly how to kind of like interface with this data on the other side. And, um, and you have to do this anyways to work with Gatsby. So Sanity comes with a built-in uh, query language called Grok, which lets you query stuff uh, immediately. So we can go here as, as fast as you have typed it in, you, it's queryable with Grok um, because it's schemaless. So if you go here, we can say service and we can query it and you will see kind of like my documents that we just made. Um, 
we will not go into the Grok now, but uh, it's it's pretty cool. You should check it out. But to make it work with Gatsby, we need to deploy a GraphQL API. So I will try and do do that. Oops. Oh, I need to be in the Studio folder. So the command to deploy a GraphQL API is sanity GraphQL deploy. We want the playground. And then we go to playground. An important thing is that this GraphQL API is different from the Gatsby's because Gatsby makes its own. But Gatsby uses the schema, the GraphQL schema here, to build different types. So if you don't have content for a type, it won't break the build. Um, but here we can see, we can search for all service. Uh, we can have the name, right? And the audiences. And here we can kind of like follow the, those references. We can have kind of like the audiences here. And here you can see that the ordering is different. Maybe that's actually what we want. Um, and this is data that's kind of nice to interface with, with React and components. Um, maybe you want to make kind of like automatic landing pages with this data. Um, we can already use kind of like the type probably. Uh, so we can have kind of like slash audience, uh, no, sorry, uh, slash service um, and so on. But we lack something here. We lack kind of like a nice slug for these documents. And um, let's add a slug field. Let's see. Uh, I just realized that the countdown I had on the screen has stopped at 8.40, and we have how much time left? We have just kind of like five minutes left. What? <laughs> um, there you go, seven minutes left. Um, let's make a slug. Did, oh, I have to put this in. Let's go back to the desk tool, service, auditing. And here you have kind of like a slug field that, that looks pretty much like a string field. It would be nice if it was simpler to make this slug. Um, so yet again, small kind of like customization thing. Uh, almost all of the, or I will say all of the fields in Sanity has this option thing, with different options, different functionalities for the field that's special for that field. And for the slug field, we have something called source. So we can say, pick the field called name as the source. You can also pass this a custom function if you want to do some custom stuff. Um, let's see. Didn't it work? Because this is a demo. Let's do like let's go and look at what we are actually what we actually would do when we are working. We'll go into the reference docs, we go into schema types, we find the slug field, options, source. This seems correct. And here we can see kind of like an example of how we can pass a custom uh, function to Slugify. Um, so what did I do wrong here? Name, slug, type, slug, 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 option, source, name. Let's reload. What? Have I found a bug, maybe? Yeah, this is obviously it's live coding, so. <laughs> um, 
or maybe did I stop the thing? No. Interesting. Um, oh, this is so stupid. It's options. <laughs> it's options, not the uh, option. Um, no, it should work. There we go. Yeah. Then we got this generate button, and then we can push that, and it will catch kind of like the service name and make it sluggable. <laughs> um, nice thing, or like a thing to know that a slug isn't just a string field. It has this it's kind of like an object. So here you can see how that is kind of like written. So it's slug.current. This is kind of like a future proofing because we want to be able to have historical slugs. Um, so that's just nice to know. Um, right. A final thing, and maybe it's probably a final thing I want to show you is um, back to this audience thing. Uh, we realized that we want to have kind of like a catch-all audience. We have we want to kind of like an all. Um, so let's make that. Let's create a new audience called all. And we know that we want that audience for all the services. But it's pretty annoying to have to kind of like manually add it to all the services, right? Um, so maybe you could make kind of like a validation thing that looked for the all audience, but that also seems a bit contrived. So the final thing I want to show you is something called initial value, a way to kind of like when you make a new document, just pre-fill a value. Um, and the first thing we need to know is what data we want to place there. And since we have kind of some data here, you have HR, finance, and all. We can go into this audience array, and we can look at the data. Uh, oh, let me push that. And we know that the last one was the all reference, so this one. So what we can do is to copy paste that. And then we can go into this audience description field. And we can add initial value. And this is an array. So we need to give it an array. Now we can paste this in. And we can probably remove this key because that will be added automatically, I think, hope. And then we can make it a bit more JavaScripty. Like this. And now in theory, when we make a new service, it should be automatically set to the all audience. So let's see if this works. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Super simple example, like initial value, you can use that also inside of this thing. So if you wanted to automatically set the reference to be all as kind of like a, um, default, and that will be an object. You can also do that. So now when I push this add item, it should be, oh, didn't work. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that, yeah, it worked. It just needed some time. Um, so that's also possible, but we probably don't want that. Um, a nice thing to know with, about initial value, initial value can also, um, you can also pass it a promise. You can ask for an API to return the value you want to set. So it's also pretty flexible. Yeah, I think that's everything we've got time for. <laughs> like these 45 minutes went past so fast, but I hope you have kind of gotten something from this. And I, I can try and and um, and summarize a bit what kind of like we talked about. So again, it's kind of like it's all about trying to capture intent. What are they trying to solve? How can you make a content model that like captures that and don't get kind of, like uh, distracted by how things look? 
Um, it's about thinking about the editor experience. What, did, what kind of things can do they need? What context do they need? What, what should the field labels be? The descriptions, how can a validation be helpful and not just kind of like punish you for doing the wrong thing? And how can we automate stuff? Like things we are going to do a lot, a lot of times, we can automate. And how can we can like leverage the different things in schemas to 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 get that? Yeah. Um, maybe we have one or two minutes for any questions um, that you may have. Then you have to type it super fast in the chat. Um, but of course, um, you can always find us on Slack.sanity.io. Some of you might already be there. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I have the impossible Twitter handle, K Melvey. <laughs> it's so hard to say. Um, but yeah, feel free to to ping me anywhere you can find me and ask questions. And thank you all for uh, being around and, and following this workshop. Um, right. And I will stop stream. And um, please check out other things at Gatsby Conf. Oh, I need to be on screen to wave. All right. See you all. <laughs>